on this installment of your weekly essential oil education here in the wellness gathering. Um, I'm going to take you through a class that um, I myself even need. Um, it's called, I'm calling it a case for carrier oils. Um, I think that we have talked, we talk a lot about diluting your oils or using a, a different a carrier oil to make the oil go further or to slow the absorption rate or these different things. But I thought it would be valuable and beneficial to each of us to think about what types of carrier oils are out there. Why would we want to use them? Um, what advantage does using carrier oil even offer us as we use our oils? And so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview talk and maybe I'll do a little bit of a dive into some of the carrier oil considerations that you might, that might be on your list of things that you would uh, oils that carry oils that you would consider. Um, and so I hope that uh, in doing this, you'll learn some things. I've got a few tips and uh, places I want to take you and show you also that might be beneficial um, for you as you think about um, how to use carry oils, how to um, make your essential oils go further and do more for you um, and uh, get the best benefit. Um, carrier oils are useful because it's sometimes necessary to dilute a neat, um, an oil that's neat or a neat oil. So neat, when we say neat oil, we mean applying directly. Some oils are totally, it's totally fine lavender frankincense. Some of these oils are very uh, gentle and it's no big deal, but other oils like uh, peppermint, oregano, thieves, these can be considered, these are what we consider hot oils. And so their dilution ratios based on that. Um, and, and this is especially true in applying to the skin and think of people who have sensitive skin, um, people, uh, the elderly or the very young um, babies and um, toddlers and kids. So these are powerful, highly concentrated essential oils, right? We talk about this all the time in one drop, the contents of peppermint um, is really significant in one drop of peppermint oil. And so um, by, by adding that extra carrier oil, you're able to um, delay the absorption rate. And also a key, a, another key thing about them is um, some people will have, if you, let's say that you had a, uh, some issues, some back issues and you need to support your back. And you decided that the best way to do that would be take an oil like pan away that maybe is on the hotter side of things. Um, and you applied that every day, every day. Like when you woke up in the morning or before you went to bed, just one time a day, you're applying this every day. Well, your, your body can actually build up a sensitivity to it from um, recurrent use in the same area. And so if you're somebody who has sensitive skin, I, I mean, generally I'm not somebody who goes and thinks to grab a carrier oil. I'm usually putting oils on just straight. Um, but I, what, what, what another consideration about these oils is that they're very highly, um, there's a, they're going to help the, help the oil stay on your skin and not actually evaporate quickly. Right. So you've probably experienced this. You put it on and almost instantly, you can't even tell that you've had it on before you had it on in that spot. Well, a carrier oil will help it stay there and then help both delay the absorption rate and keep it there on the skin. Um, so they're often used during massages, uh, acting as that lubricating agent when working with larger areas of muscles. Um, I've even taken, when I've gotten a massage, I've taken my Young Living massage oils and, and the uh, masseuse was like, wow, these are some of the greatest, <laughs> this is like one of the best oils I've ever used for massage. She really thought it was great. So um, think about it, using it for massaging, covering a large surface area of skin, uh, making lotions, rubs, creams to use on babies, children, elderly, in any sensitive area. Um, and of course, you can make rollers for ease of use um, for all these different considerations. So here, some I'm going to kind of give you a list of some of the common carrier oils, coconut oil. Um, whole coconut oil is solid at room temperature, about 73 degrees is where it um, is solid. And so anything hotter than that, um, which in, you can tell in summertime in Texas, my coconut oil that I cook with is completely liquid. And, um, and in the winter, it's not. Um, it has long unsaturated fatty acid triglycerides. 
and has a high percentage of completely saturated triglycerides. So when the smaller fatty acids and long chain tri triglycerides are separated from the whole coconut oil, it leaves only saturated fats or a fraction of the whole oil. And that is then known as fractionated coconut oil. And so this is the pumpable kind, the fractionated um, oil that you can get on like Amazon, Sprouts, Whole Foods, any of those kinds of uh, organic uh, type retailers or stores. Um, fractionated coconut oil is an advantage over the whole coconut oil in that it has, um, it's, it's in liquid form, right? All the time. So you don't have to worry about the temperature changes. So that therefore it makes it easier to use in like a roller ball, but with no double, no double bonds, there is no oxidation. So fractionated coconut oil is a carrier that doesn't really go rancid. So that's a, that's a huge advantage. It has almost an indefinite shelf life and is in perfectly clear liquid form. Um, some other advantages of that fractionated coconut oil are it's odorless and colorless, so and it won't stain and washes out of clothing and sheets. It absorbs into the skin while reducing essential oil evaporation. That's what we were talking about earlier. It's excellent on skin and is a very safe moisturizer, softener, and a safe non-irritant lubricator. It leaves skin smooth with no greasy feeling. It uh, has a low production cost, so it makes it cost effective. Um, it can be mixed with other more expensive carriers to increase shelf life. And it can also be used to create different cream textures. So if you're going to take a whole state, like a shea butter, a cocoa butter, or something like that, you can mix in the fractionated to kind of get the creamy, creamy feel that you might want. Um, it doesn't aggravate the skin um, or like make it make any skin conditions worse. It's fully digestible and is considered an excellent and healthy cooking oil. So again, we're talking about the fractionated coconut oil here. And it is just a really good multi-purpose carrier oil that's out there on the market. What I love is that nine, I, I, I mean, actually I was gonna say nine times out of 10, but I can't really remember seeing ever that you can, you almost always can buy that fractionated oil with a pump on it. And so it's really, it makes it really easy to pump into a carrier, I mean, into a, um, a roller ball or anything like that. And so it makes it just really easy to apply and use or pump into your hand for just like one teaspoon of something that you might want to spread somewhere. Um, some advantages of virgin coconut nut oil, the non-fractionated, that stuff that's in the whole state is, um, it's, it's got a great shelf life too, and it can be liquid at room temperature, but it doesn't include, uh, all the fat chains, the virgin coconut oil, um, they people really swear by the health benefits of virgin coconut oil. So you could do a quick little uh, Google search and see um, the passion out there for this product uh, for skincare, um, and it it really can um, it has all of its own like antifungal, antimicrobial, anti all of those types of thing properties. Um, it virgin coconut oil is white. And it's solid below 73 degrees. So, and it has a slight coconut flavor and scent. So there's that to, that you would have to factor in. Um, if you melt it and then add essential oils, you obviously wouldn't want to microwave it. You just use the, you want to melt it with like a double broiler situ situation. Um, and that, and that really is enough. I mean, virgin coconut oil or extra, you know, the kind that you buy in the big tubs or whatever. I mean, that melts in your hand. So uh, just a little bit of heat is all you need. Um, you would want to melt it first, then add the oils and then put it in a baby food jar or a little jelly jar or a, a small mason jar. And then that can be your, um, that's something I like to do. If I know if, if I'm making a con, a, something like a, chest rub or something like that. I will make a big batch of, I'll put some coconut oil, melt it down a little and then add all my oils. And then once it comes back to a solid state, then I can put it in a jar and I know I have that easily accessible. So that's one option. And one of the, I, I, that can kind of be considered an advantage of virgin coconut oil in that it comes back to a solid state most of the time in your house. Um, another popular oil would be grapeseed oil. Um, obviously, obviously coming from its name, it's made from the seed of the seed of the grape. 
its production prior to the 20th century was pretty limited because grape seeds contain such a small quantity of oil. Um, the process of extraction is labor intensive and is most widely known for its healthy culinary applications. It's beginning to be recognized as a massage oil, lotion base, hygiene cream, and lip balm. It's relatively odorless and is really good, a really excellent carrier oil. Um, it's mostly clear with a very light yellow or green tinge and has a slightly sweet taste. It offers regenerative and re restructuring characteristics that offer, qual offer quality skin moisturizing. It's considered excellent lubricant for massage and shaving. It leaves a glossy film that protects essential oils from evaporation. Um, saturation takes longer than some other carrier oils. Um, some claim it has astringent qualities that astringent qualities that tighten the skin and tone it. Um, it doesn't aggravate or clog pores. So that is a consideration for grapeseed oil and ways that you might use it or some of its advantages of why you would choose grapeseed over others. Um, another really popular is jojoba. Jojoba oil is found in the, the seed of the jojoba plant, hence the name. This oil makes up um, nearly 50% of the seed and in, in the seed's weight. It's native to the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico and is considered a natural wax. Um, it's nearly odorless, has a slight yellow tint, or nearly colorless and is odorless, but it does have a slight yellow tint. It's normally liquid at room temperature and its melting point is just over 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, some advantages of jojoba are that it has a very stable shelf life. When mixed with other carriers, it increases the shelf life. It's known for nourishing qualities to the skin, closely resembles the natural oils of our own skin, so it makes a really good one for your face. It absorbs well into the skin with no greasy feeling and is naturally protective to sensitive skin areas. Another one, olive oil, universally known as uh, one of the most quality culinary oils. It has a multitude of uses, um, including carrier oil. Uh, depending on the press, it has a full bodied flavor and a strong aroma. And so some people don't necessarily love that when they're wanting the experience of essential oils. They're wanting the scents or smells of the oils and they don't like the influence of the olive oil. It can also have a golden brown or green color. Um, and if it is a color and odor that is pleasing, um, then uh, and you can also enjoy its healthful benefits to your skin and hair. Again, if some people don't love the way olive oil smells, and so as a result, they might find themselves kind of put off by anything that's made with olive oil. It has a high vitamin and mineral count. It's, ha it's a good quality lubricant, it has approximately a one-year shelf life, and is an excellent conditioner for the hair. Now, that shelf life that we kind of keep coming back to you have to know that anytime you add oils to a carrier oil, say for a rollerball or what I was talking about, making like a, a rub or a cream or a lotion, that once you add these essential oils to that, it now has the shelf life of that oil. So if it's a if it's a uh, recently purchased oil that hasn't been sitting on the shelf for a long time, then you might get six months to a year to two years or, or, or whatever. But if it's an oil that is, you know, that's been sitting on the shelf for a while, or they weren't moving that product well, and then by the time you buy it, you've already, it's already six months to a year down, well down its shelf life, then now your rollerball and your oils are subject to that to that shelf life. So it's something just worth considering as you think about it. Um, the last one I'll talk about is safflower oil. It's extracted from the seeds of the safflower plant grown in great abundance for this commonly used vegetable oil is pretty inexpensive because of the abundance for which it's grown. It has a high content of unsaturated fatty acids and can go rancid quickly. Its best shelf life, about one year, is guaranteed if it is mixed with another quality carrier oil, such as fractionated oil, co fractionated coconut oil. Um, it's got a pale yellow, nearly colorless um, look to it and has very little odor. Um, 
It doesn't stain. That's that would be an advantage to it. it. Has excellent moisturizing qualities, and is easily absorbed. And so, um, as you think about all of these different oils, one of the considerations you might want to can think about is uh, expect, a the area that you're trying to cover and like what the purpose of it is. Um, especially as it pertains to your face, there's some considerations um, on uh, what on, on a what we call a comedogenic scale, and that's something that you would that that wouldn't be unfamiliar even if you were like going into a skincare line store or something like that. The comedogenic rating is something that you would want to consider. And um, let me share that. Let me share uh, just a real quick photo of that for you. Um, this comedogenic rating can show you, um, I might, let me, let me close myself out here, but the higher the rating, the greater the likelihood of it clogging your pores. And so if you're looking at wanting to do some sort of like face serum or night moisturizer or something like that, or you want it to, then you're going to want something that has a, a really low rating of like zero or maybe one. And so as you can see here, there's a lot of oils that fall into that. Um, some of them I've never actually heard of like, I, I mean, I've never personally, I'm sure you can find on Amazon almost anything these days, but um, you know, I, grape seed oil you see there, we talked about that, hemp oil, or those are zeros, um, castor oil, um, hazelnut oil, raspberry seed oil. There's just a ton of zeros that are pretty unfamiliar to me. I think it's worth mentioning that, um, and, and, you know, as I was looking around at some different considerations, and I'll share that in the comments, as I was looking around at some different considerations, I was seeing people were rating some of these different oils in some of the different ways. And so I'm not sure where the standard lies, except that there are some generally accepted zero and one, like lower versus higher. And the higher that you wouldn't want to put on your face includes like coconut oil. But uh, and, and otherwise, when if you're using coconut oil anywhere else on your body, it, it's not going to have the same effect because the pores on the skin, of course, are um, a lot more sensitive and secreting a different amount of oil than say, you know, the, <laughs> the pores on our knee or somewhere else on our body. So I, I think it's always worth considering as you're thinking about a carrier oil, well, how, what, what's my goal here? Is this something, a facial application? Am I making my own ser face serum or beard oil or something like that? Then I need to take into some consideration, some other things that I might not have to, if I was just making a massage oil or a chest rub or something like that. Um, so essential oils can be added to carrier oil. A carrier oil or a carrier oil can be applied to an area first, followed by the essential oil. Um, and that that whole process is referred to as dilution. Um, it's usually specified in terms of either a percentage or a number of drops to be added. And if you have a, a desk reference or a pocket reference, you'll often see dilute, you know, one to four or one to 20 or whatever. They'll give you a, a scenario or an amount. Um, and the descriptions, you can, you can find a charts online everywhere, but I want to share with you a kind of a neat resource um, that you can uh, consider for yourself. Um, it's at oilynotebook.com. Um, so uh, let me pull that up for you. Um, oilynotebook.com offers a conversion chart and it's free. You can um, access it for free and they have Young Living specific oils there. Um, but as you can see here, this is says oilynotebook.com. And if you come up here to this dilution calendar calculator, you can come here um, and, oh, it says it's going to be closing its door. So, the, but this is a good idea for um, how you can get a sense of what kind of oils you might want. And so they put this, hey, here, how do I how do I like, let's look at peppermint. That's a really, that's a, let's say that's a hot oil with a one to four expectation here, come up here to peppermint oil. And then it's telling you the, the dilution four to one. And then you, it also allows you to toggle for age range because young living has a expectation down here that you see our recommendation on how to adjust for kids of different ages. Um, so 
here you can put in like, let's say I'm making this for my to a toddler and what bottle size I'm going to use the five is fit 10 or 15, or you can mix in hand and you could put a teaspoon amount or something like that. So let's say I wanted to mix up a peppermint small bottle for two to five as a maximum of six drops. And it's rarely necessary as it will work equally well. So you can start with fewer drops and see if it mess it affects um, anything for you. Um, I had been hearing that um, you could log in and create your own recipes and stuff like that. But um, in the meantime, you're still going to have to keep track of your own recipes. But here's a really great tool to get a sense of how much you should or would want to dilute um, in any given and uh, age range or scenario. So go get your hands on that while it's still there to take a look at, but also you can just easily access. I heard somebody make a recommendation of taking one of your old um, CBD bottles or just, or even just buying a dropper bottle and filling that with your favorite carrier oil so that when you do come across those dilution ratings that you can just easily do drops from that, from your carrier oil into, um, into your, um, into your rollerball or whatever you're going to do for your recipe. Um, I, I do think it's also, you know, you can find out how many milliliters, like, so 20 drops is one milliliter of essential oil. One teaspoon has a hundred drops. So as you're thinking about the ratio that will help you know how, you know, how to think about making a care a, a a percentage or a ratio. So if you've got a one to four, and you know one teaspoon is a hundred drops, then you could add to that you know twenty twenty to twenty five drops of peppermint um, for a one to four dilution ratio like that. So you can find those kinds of dilution charts online, and um, there's there's a bunch of different things offered. Find what works best for you or makes the most sense the way your brain does math. Um, but again, not every, um, not every oil requires this level of dilution and often it's easy to just, um, you know, on stuff like lavender or other things, it is easiest just to put it on neat. Um, but if there is an oil that you're like using really consistently and you might want to look into making, creating that a roller ball to give you that extra added benefit of the carrier oils plus, um, you know, extending the life of the oils that you have, because they'll go further if you're adding carrier oils to them and um, helping your body to not develop an uh, oversensitivity to um, something that might be in that oil. And that's where like these, I love these lids that you can buy that are the roller top lids that you can buy. You can buy a 10 pack um, at, from Young Living. Like this is a kid sense genius and Young Living does of course have some lines like they have a seedlings line and the kid sense and they have their own roller bottles that come pre-diluted and ready to go. So you don't have to do any of that math. You can just buy those and it's ready to go. Um, or you can, you know, pop tops on, these types of five milliliter oils, um, or, you know, over here, I have a, a 15, I took an empty bottle, just put one of those roller tops on it, filled it with an oil that are oils that we use, uh, for seasonal discomfort. And, um, like, here's one I have that's for focus. Um, and these, you might find these often, um, on Amazon, like this size of a rollers, 10 milliliter usually. Um, so I, I I, I would tell you if, if you're finding that you, there's a specific oil that you A, go to often or B, want to start incorporating in a more consistent way, I found that especially if it's a blend of multiple oils, I've found that you um, it's a huge benefit to just create that ahead of time. Do yourself the easy button of making that. And then you're going to be much more inclined to grab it, to use it, to put it on, to throw it in your purse or do something like that. Uh, the last thing I want to say about carrier oils is, um, of course, Young Living has their own carrier oils. And I really love, uh, or I'm sorry, we call them massage oils. Um, I really love Young Living's massage oils. I've tried several of them. Uh, they have been out of stock on some of my favorites lately, and I'm just really excited that they're back in stock. So I'm going to just show you these real quick. Um, these are Young Living's massage oils. 
the relaxation massage oil and and the thing that are, is about this is it has oils in it. So this has tangerine, lavender, spearmint, ylang, ylang peppermint, coriander, bergamot, and it has this really uh, nice, uh, smooth, you know, relaxing, obviously that's the name, oil. Then there's sensation. Think of this more as uh, coriander, ylang, ylang, bergamot. So uh, arousing, amplifying, this would be a great um, one for connection. Um, and if, if you want, if you want to do a massage at home, the sensation would be a great oil for that, um, dragon time. I really like this one too. I love the way this smells. It's got uh, marjoram, clary sage, fennel, lavender, yarrow, and jasmine. And it actually is, has a color. It has a slight like bluish tint to it. Um, and, uh, this is a really good one for balance, um, especially for women, um, and it's, it's formulated for women, um, and is really great to help balance hormones, especially as it pertains to, um, your cycle. There's ortho sport massage oil, ortho ease massage oil, both really great for muscles post-workout. I personally love the way ortho ease smells. It smells really great. I also love the way cell light massage oils smells. Cell light has grapefruit, cypress, juniper, seed word, and clary sage is really good for, um, you know, those, uh, those parts of your legs that, um, might need a little bit of extra TLC. Um, it's good for dry brushing to, to kind of help, um, get that lymphatic system going. Um, the grapefruit in it comes really, really through. And I really love the way it smells. Um, and last but not least is this, and I don't know why these three oils pop up first, but, um, is the just general V6 vegetable oil complex. Um, and you can buy that one in an oil refill. And then this, this would basically is a blend of fractionated coconut oil, sesame seed oil, grape seed oil, sweet almond oil, wheat germ oil, sunflower, and extra virgin olive oil. So it's kind of like a multi V6. It's got six different oils and is a really good way to build and enhance your, um, your carrier oil experience and building your own roller balls and making your own, uh, adding them to capsules and and different things like that. Um, I, V6 is a, just a great one to have around. And there are some, as you can see here, there are some good resources available um, on Young Living's blog. Um, what is a carrier oil and how to use it? Here's a video you can watch. So if you want to take a little bit deeper dive and look at some of the ways that Young Living is recommending you use some of these things, uh, of course, that's always available there for you. Youngliving.com slash blog is a really great place to be to find good information and good resources. Uh, carrier oil not being excluded. Um, so hopefully in this, we've we've I've covered some ground and we've talked about we've we've considered some different ways. Uh, to enhance the use of our oils, uh, to think about them in new ways, to think about what carrier oils and just even what their own properties are in and of themselves and how adding our great essential oils to them or the add or vice versa, right? Um, if there was something you were already using coconut oil to, therefore there's an essential oil that you could add to that that would make it that result even better or even that much more magnified. So um, it's a way that we can extend the um, extend the, every drop of our oils. Um, we pay good money for these oils and we want um, to use them to their most effectiveness. And if that means helping them stay on the skin a little bit longer or helping um, them hydrate our skin or uh, help helping them do all those other types of things better, um, then those are something we certainly want to take advantage of. So thanks for joining me and uh, I will catch you again next time.